same holds true tonight. Julio Cesar Vasquez won't have to worry about a judge's decision anyway. He'll take the fight into his own hands. Vasquez gearing up for his battle with 23-year-old Russian Ahmed Dutiev in Belfast, Northern Ireland. You know, Julio Cesar Vasquez has one of the most impressive records in boxing. Now in his eighth professional season, he's recorded a stunning mark of 49-1 with 34 knockouts. He's just one controversial loss away from having an unblemished record. Although he's not undefeated, he is unheralded, unappreciated, and definitely underrated. He is often known as the other Julio Cesar. Overshadowed in the 154-pound weight class by WBC kingpin Terry Norris, the division's most popular champion. And by his IBF counterpart, Gianfranco Rossi, the division's longest reigning champion. Yet the overlooked and underrated Julio Cesar Vasquez is the most successful fighter of the 154-pound champions. For the WBA title holder has won 49 of his 50 pro bouts. Y si, siguiendo, ganando toda la defensa que se pueda. He said that he is trying to make more defenses and he's pretending to fight as much often as possible. A rugged southpaw, he hails from the South American boxing mecca of Santa Fe, Argentina, the hometown of legendary middleweight Carlos Monzon and WBA junior welterweight champion Juan Koji. After winning his first 30 bouts, he suffered his first and only loss, a controversial disqualification against Verno Phillips. Since then, he has continued his winning ways, knocking out Japan's Hitachi Kamayana in the first round to win the vacant WBA title. He said I was uh, very, very, very happy. Uh, he was feeling like he take in his heaven. Although he has defended his title seven times in two years, his lack of big-name opponents and quiet personality have conspired to keep Vasquez the division's most unheralded champion. Vasquez has fought 250 total rounds as a pro. He's won all eight of his world title fights, recorded 10 first-round knockouts, and hasn't lost since 1991. Why then, Bobby Chez, do the people know the other junior middleweight champions, Norris and Rossi, more than the ones beaten Vasquez? Well, the big names are a part of the exposure to the public, and not only who you fought, but who you've beaten. Certainly, Terry Norris, he has the most exposure. He's on Showtime and Showtime event television all the time, all throughout the year. Beating the legendary Sugar Ray Leonard made him a household name overnight. And the two big fights with Simon Brown, there's top quality opposition there. I mean, there's somebody you have to beat to everybody, so everybody can know you. With the other guys, they're not really on that much. You know, Franco Rossi is certainly on more than Vasquez. Vasquez is the least known, and he hasn't fought any top American names or big household names. He needs the big names. He needs to be on the tube. How would Vasquez do against Norris or Rossi? Well, Vasquez is a vicious puncher. He's mean, and he seems to be in great condition, although his last few fights have gone very short in the way of distance. But if his chin is as good as his offensive skills, he could give either one of those fights, fighters, excuse me, a great fight and give them fits because it's a southpaw and they're all a pain. What does the less experienced Dotiev have to do to have a chance in this fight? We know virtually nothing about Dotiev, so I think what he has to do is he has to have some offense and he has to have a good chin because if he doesn't, he could get ruined real early. Well, right now, let's take a look at the tail of the tape for this WBA junior middleweight title fight, which is scheduled for 12 rounds. Vasquez is four years older than Dotiev, two inches taller, weighed three quarters of a pound more, and has a two inch reach advantage. Tonight's bout is governed by the rules of the World Boxing Association. Scoring is done on a 10-point must system. Three judges score the fight. The referee does not. There is no standing eight count. The three knockdown rule is in effect. Only the referee can stop the bout. The fighter cannot be saved by the bell except in the final round. It's time to send you back to the King's Hall in Belfast, the largest part of a five-hall complex. And we put you in the dependable hands of Steve Albert and Ferdy Pacheco. Gentlemen. Thank you once again, Bruce, and welcome back to the King's Hall in Belfast, Northern Ireland. The anticipation builds as we close in on the first of two world championship fights. Later, the main event is Britain's flamboyant Chris Eubank defends his WBO super middleweight title against hometown hero Ray Close of Belfast in a rematch 
But upcoming first, the WBA Junior Middleweight Championship featuring Julio Cesar Vasquez, the other Julio Cesar, against Ahmed Dotiev of Russia. And we are back with the fight, Dr. Ferdy Pacheco. And uh, Ferdy, Vasquez says he would like to unify the Junior Middleweight the Championship of the near future, but is he on the same level right now as the other Junior Middleweight champions like Terry Norris and Gianfranco Rossi? Well, Gianfranco, yes. He, he definitely is on the same level, if not a little superior to him. I think he could take Gianfranco Rossi. However, Norris, the way he fought Simon Brown, if he fights like that again, he's a little step above. And it would be a very interesting fight because of the aggressiveness and the, and the chin and the lack of chin on Norris's part and the chin of, of Vasquez. So I, I think Norris is one step above him and Jim Franco's about level. In either case, both fights would be very interesting as far as I'm concerned. I'd like to see either one of them. What about the experience factor tonight? Ahmed Dachiev, uh, the Russian, has only uh, 13 professional fights under his belt. Uh, that should play a role. It should. It's, it's vast against uh, uh, sparse. You know, it's too much against too little. I mean, how can you say that this Russian is entitled to even the shot with as few of fights as he got, as opposed to a man who's fighting all the time in championship competition? It really is borderline in execution tonight. But we will see. Boxing's a strange world where you can level it off with one punch, so we can see. But the the, the difference is vast. In all right, our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr., is set to bring on the introduction of the challenger, Ahmed Dottier. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the semi-main event of the evening. Now making his way to the ring, please welcome the challenger from Moscow, Ahmad Dontayev. And here comes the challenger Ahmed Dontayev, a southpaw, 23 years old, born and raised in Moscow now lives in Volgograd, Russia, which used to be Stalingrad. 11-1-1, nine knockouts, has fought predominantly in Russia, and despite only 13 professional fights, rated as high as number nine by the WBA. He's the Russian junior middleweight champ, Eastern European champ, but tonight represents his first shot at a world title in 30. Adatiev, an unknown soldier in world terms. Yes, when you don't fight in, in, uh, in America or in South America or in Europe, uh, your, your opposition is not as good and, and therefore you can't calibrate how good a guy is this we truly don't know anything about this guy he's fought only in Russia we don't know any of his opponents so it, it is an absolute zipper here well, he's taking a big step tonight only his 14th fight finds himself battling for a world and title now, back to Jimmy Lennon Jr. the entrance of the WBA junior middleweight champion introducing Julio Cesar Vasquez and here comes the champion, Julio Cesar Vasquez, the 27-year-old Southpaw. Two Southpaws tonight. He is from Santa Fe, Argentina, about 400 miles outside of Buenos Aires. Impressive record, 49-1, 34 knockouts. His eighth defense of the WBA Junior Middleweight title. The only blemish on his resume back in June of 91, a disqualification against Vernon Phillips. He's had seven title defenses in a year and five months. This is a busy guy. 17 months. Can you believe that? It's, he just fought in April. It's, it's an incredible performance. And by the way, don't be surprised. Two left-handers. You hardly ever see that. You won't see any differences like two right-handers. And I know you're high on Vasquez, but do you find it tough, Bertie, to get a true read on just how good he is since he's fought mostly foreign opponents? Well, th that is a point, and a very small one, but your eyes don't deceive you. This guy's a good, he's strong as he can be, he's aggressive, he's got a chin. Watch when you, when you see him in close-up. I mean, he's got a chin that's so broad, it looks impossible to hurt that thing. He did beat American Aaron Davis last August, one of seven title defenses in the span of 17 months. So there is Julio Cesar Vazquez from the same hometown Ladies as the great Carlos Monzon. Back to Jimmy Lennon Jr. 
we welcome you to the first of our two world title main events here at King's Hall in Belfast as brought to you by Don King Productions and Sports Network as sponsored by Corona Beer. This bout is sanctioned by the World Boxing Association. The president, Gilberto Mendoza, supervising at ringside Nipper Reed in association with the British Boxing Board of Control, stewards in charge, Bill Sheeran and John Williamson. Introducing to you the judges at ringside, Hank Mayers, Gustavo Padilla, and Nestor Ramirez. Introducing to you the referee in charge of this bout, we have John Coyle. All right, fans, here we go with the WBA Junior Middleweight Championship of the World scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first the challenger on my left in the red corner. He enters the ring wearing red trunks and fighting out of Moscow in Russia. He weighed in at 10 stone, 13 pounds, 2 ounces, or an even and ready 153 U.S. pounds. His record includes 11 wins, 1 loss, 1 draw, with 9 wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the WBA number 9 ranked junior middleweight contender, introducing Ahmed Guntier. opponent across the ring. On my right is the defending champion in the blue corner. He enters the ring wearing white trunks with light blue trim and he is representing his hometown of Santa Fe, Argentina. His weight 10 stone, 13 pounds, 14 ounces or 153 and three quarter U.S. pounds. His record is an outstanding 49 wins. Only one defeat with 34 wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing the WBA junior middleweight champion, making his eighth defense of his title, please welcome Julio Cesar Vasquez. Once again, here's a referee in charge, John Coyle, now to give instructions. I've had a ch chat with both of you. Work with an upper part of the glove. Defend yourself at all times. And obey my instructions at all times. Shake hands. Good luck to you both. Thank you. Final instructions from referee John Coyle of England. A good look at Ahmet Dotiev. Rated number nine by the WBA. Julio Cesar Vasquez, son of a Santa Fe baker in Argentina. You know, it's interesting, just for the record, our last trip to Europe in London, unheralded Steve Little was also rated number nine by the WBA before he upset Michael Nunn for the WBA super middleweight title. This is Dottiev's first world title shot, the Russian junior middleweight champion, Eastern European champion, Julio Cesar Vasquez. We saw him for the first time this past March in Las Vegas, his second fight in the States. He stopped Armand Picard in the second round to retain his title, made his U.S. debut as a substitute for Julian Jackson, knocking out Troy Wortham in the sixth round in November of 89. Vasquez has 10 wins by way of knockout in the first round. Here is round one, scheduled for 12, for the WBA Junior Middleweight Championship. He is not a guy that waits. As you can see, he's already put in a couple of bombs to the body. He's jabbing very hard. It doesn't seem to be much motion at all. Uh, there's a first first good action. By the way, is it surprising that he's dressed in red? Ahmet Dotiev from Moscow. Very appropriate. Vasquez, a feisty southpaw. He's explosive, hard punching his best weapon, the left hook. In the tradition of the outstanding Argentinian fighters such as Carlos Monzon, Victor Galindez, he can be described as crafty and rugged. Carefully carving out a niche in this division not yet as popular as other fighters from Latin America, but becoming recognized. Dadiev is covering up. He's very conscious of getting hit in, in the chin. Consequently, he's gotten hit some resounding body shots because Vasquez will not let you get away without getting hit when he comes in. Dadiev, also a southpaw, 
effective with both hands. We are told he is an all-action fighter with a good right hand, smart boxer with a hard punch. He has had some problems with southpaws, even though he is a southpaw, because he hasn't fought many southpaws. He burst out of the pro circuit January of 91 with three straight first-round knockouts. Four of his nine knockout wins have come in the first round. Well, I will say he does not look frozen. He doesn't look scared at all. He looks like he's standing right there, willing to take the shots. It's a little bit, he's a little bit out of class right now, but you, you don't see any fear or any even respect in his eyes. He's just waiting for his turn. Vasquez very reserved, a hero back in his hometown of Santa Fe, voted the Boxer of the Year in Argentina by the national media there. Less than a minute remaining in the opening round. Vasquez, the champion in the white trunks. Dantiev, the challenger in the red. Dantiev's first and only loss in Helsinki, Finland. His first 10-rounder a day before his 22nd birthday, losing by decision to Darren Morris, September of 92. He won the national junior middleweight title in April of 93 and added the Eastern European Championship last June. But tonight, his first crack at the big one. Well, the right jab of Vasquez is doing its work. I mean, he means to set up the left hand, and he's been doing a very effective job with the right jab. Less than 30 seconds in the first round. The square jaw, Julio Cesar Vasquez, one of the busiest fighters on the globe. And that jaw looks like uh, Rocky Rivera from Argentina. He used to have a jaw just like that, a light, a middleweight, rather, from uh, Buenos Aires, who used to have a big knockout record and fought just like this. Good. Nice left hand that caught. Oh, getting dirty here. A they flurry caught. by Vasquez here at the end of the first round. They just caught Dadiev off balance. It was not a very big shot. They don't allow microphones in the corners here as they do in the United States, so. Bertie, I hope you're a good lip reader. Well, I can lip read in Spanish, but I'm hopeless in Russian. <laughs> I, I absolutely don't know what, what he's saying, except that you did well in the first round, son. Go back and let's get some more. In second. Here's the replay, which really doesn't show anything except the master. Well, that was right on the button. That was right on the button as Marquez threw the left hand and just about wobbled Dadia. But Dadia was tough. He came right back. I mean, Dadiev's impressed me for the first round. Not he's not a great fighter, but that he's not scared. He's not he's not uh, afraid of mixing it up. And after all, he had a, a world champion right on his case, trying to put him out in the first round. Let's see what happens in the second. So far, he's impressed me in his cool-headedness. When we spoke to Dadiev yesterday, he seemed very calm and very unassuming, and he takes that stance here in the first round. He hasn't frozen. He's keeping his cool to this point. He has tasted that thunder once. He went back, wobbled a little bit, not much. Of course, what it remains to be seen what this body punishment is going to do to him. I don't think he's ever faced a guy who can punch to the body like Vasquez can. Vasquez, 49 and 1 with 34 knockouts. He's 27. He's never been knocked down. Luis Spada, who supervises him, uh, did tell us, though, that he was once knocked down after the bell, but it doesn't go into the books. Here's some good body shots by Dacia. Well, they hit mostly shoulders, but at least Vasquez let him throw it without countering. Maybe he's just setting up a trap for him because he didn't do any counter at all. Little flurry by Dacia to the head. I'm telling you, this guy's not impressed. He's here to fight. Dadiev is here to fight. He's not going to be easy. Well, he came a long way from Russia. He is one of six children. The youngest of six. You know, sometimes fighting for the championship inspires you to superhuman efforts. And uh, he's certainly got nothing to lose here today. In modern times, the only Russian to hold a pro version of a world title, WBC flyweight king Yari Arbashikov, who bases himself in Japan. Midway through round two. Gautier pouring it on but good defense. Those punches were blocked by the champ. Yeah, they were hitting gloves, but it, it gives him a little bit of uh, strength and a little bit of heart, uh, courage and heart. When he sees that the champion standing there and not punching back, well, you figure might as well do that a lot. Dantiev never knocked down, cut only once, but not deep. 
We asked him the fighter he most admired. He said, Julio Cesar Chavez. We thought at first he said Bobby Chez. Yeah, I, I thought it was. Everybody was laughing at us. What are you laughing about? Bobby Chez was a good fighter. Bobby Purdy said that, not me. We'll hear from Bobby and Bruce a little bit later in our New York studios, and I'm sure Bobby will uh, get his licks in. Round two rages on. Under 30 seconds in the round. I mentioned Luis Spada, who supervises Vasquez. He's from Panama, managed former WBA featherweight champ, Eusebio Pedroza, and Bernardo Checa, who now trains Ray Close, who will uh, challenge for Chris Eubanks' title later. A nice Pretty round good combination by Dottiev. Yeah, it's a nice round for Dottiev. Well, he may not be winning the round, but he's in there very competitively this round. In fact, much better than the first, much better. And the bell to win round two. Good round for the challenger. Now, let's go to Bruce Beck in New York. Back at our control center for this transatlantic broadcast, Bruce Beck with Bobby Chez. And, Bobby, now that you've seen this mysterious Russian, what do you think? Well, he's a little awkward now. We know he's a southpaw. He's got a reasonable little jab. He hides real well, tries to keep from getting hit with any of the real flush shots. And I think I actually gave him the second round, so not the blowout on paper we thought it might be. Does he need to be busy the way he was in that second round? Well, he threw a few quick combinations, keeping Vasquez off guard. And Vasquez has been a little tentative, much more so than I've seen him in the past. Who knows, maybe he didn't take this guy too serious and he's worried about his gas tank over the long haul now. What about the two southpaws going head to head? Southpaws normally box orthodox boxers, so it might be just as awkward for them to jump in with another southpaw right now, but, you know, I don't think it's going to be that big a deal tonight. All right, let's go back to Steve and Ferdy in Belfast, Ireland. Thank you, Bruce. We are getting Seven ready for round three. Round three. The WBA Junior Middleweight Championship. Here at the King's Hall, capacity 8,000, Belfast, Northern Ireland. The champion, Julio Cesar Vazquez in the white trunks. And the challenger, Ahmed Dottiev of Russia in the red trunks. Well, Vazquez got a tongue lashing in the corner there. He possibly blew that round, at, at least his corner thought so. And uh, they're saying to him, how dare you blow a round to this guy here? Come on, let's get active. Don't let this guy punch without hitting him on the way back. Is it possible Vazquez has taken the, the challenger a little too lightly coming in. It's always possible when you look at a guy's record. He's got such few fights against nobody. I mean, who wouldn't take him lightly? But still, when you're in boxing this long, you know that every time you get in there, it's a different setup. You know, it's like a new challenge all over again. You got to do it all over. You can't do that. You cannot underestimate. I mean, look what happened to the first fight, a fight between Eubank and Close. Vasquez told us yesterday he's very well prepared and he'd be surprised if this fight went 12 rounds. I think everybody in this hall would be surprised. Including Dadiev, I think. If they leave Dadiev figures if he's going to win, he's going to have to knock him out or really hurt him. Dadiev, 11 1 and 1 with nine knockouts. He's only 23. He's rated ninth by the WBA, number 27. There's a disparity by the WBC. And there is a difference in size. Vasquez uh, appears to be much bigger than Dadiev. And uh, so far, he's not using that height or, or uh, size to any advantage. He's just content to jab away, trying to open up things and, and hit to the body when uh, nothing's going uh, clear to the head. Whereas Dadiev's defense is pretty good to the head. Look at this. He's got his gloves way up high. Those jabs are hitting gloves a long time before they hit the head. Dadiev showing good form. And this is first shot at a world championship. Vasquez 5'8", Dottie of 5'6 and a half. The weight is nearly even. 153 and three quarters for Vasquez. And down goes Vasquez! And strange things do happen in boxing. And he particularly is, on Showtime. He is not in real bad shape. He bounced right back up, but he was down. Vasquez put to the deck for the first time in his career. And now we know something that nobody told us. This guy can really bang. What a surprise. Less than 30 seconds to go. In round number three, the champion Julio Cesar Vasquez stunned as he is put to the canvas by the challenger Ahmed Dapiev. 
Well, it doesn't seem to have bothered him any, but it also didn't enrage him because he didn't coming back after him real hard. As Vasquez content to continue to just bip and bop. He better get some gas uh, going here or else he's going to have me in for a long night. Vasquez is really sucking wind right now as the bell sounds. What a round for the unheralded Atiev. Well, we should see that knockdown in a perfect replay, and then we can better define what happened as Vasquez was caught totally by surprise. That's not exactly a flash. A perfect right hand. It was more of a hook, sort of a combination hook uppercut because it was coming from one side. But let's watch it again. And you see how it lands right on the chin. That one missed it. Missed it and there it is. It's almost a, an uppercut hook. It was a different it was between those two territories. But one thing it did, it had to a devastating effect down he went even though he rolled up and got right back up but that gave him a 10 out round and you know what he's ahead Donnie is ahead I gave him the second round I gave him that one 10-8 so boy, Ten seconds. things are changing in Belfast and if you thought that Vasquez took a tongue lashing between the previous round yeah. second right. round four round four Let's see if Dotiev can pick up where he left off as Vasquez senses the urgency moving in quickly Vasquez knocked down for the first time in his illustrious career. 49 wins, one defeat, 34 knockouts, two minutes into round three with a right-left right combination, but the right put him down. And he really is mad now. I mean, uh, his corner has steamed him up. So see what happens when you're just taking it easy? Well, the smaller man and more determined right now. Dadiev got in his shot, did what he wanted to, surprised this crowd. Surprised me because I didn't think he had that kind of a punch, especially on this the jaw that uh, Vasquez has. My gosh, to get him down, you really had to get him a good shot. Yes. Well, we prefaced it earlier by saying we saw the upset of Michael Nunn in Europe, our last trip overseas, and Steve Little was also rated number nine, and ironically, the same for Dapier. Well, at least Little had a good respectable career and everybody knew he was nobody knows who this guy is nobody and all of a sudden here he is and he's dropped this seemingly uh, iron jawed Vasquez the champion not being able to get to him now I don't think for one second he solved the problem he has well, not now with the Eastern European luck raised it really opens the door for a lot of these youngsters from places like Russia to do their thing and get recognized around the world. Absolutely. There's a huge population. There's no reason why we can't see some great fighters come out of there. It certainly proved pretty good in World War II. <laughs> good point. They were tough. Round number four moving on. Big left hand there, but a good elusive slip move by Dantiev. One minute to go in the round. Again, showing good experience the way he moved out of there. Shows he's had experience in, uh, in defensive. We pointed out how unusual it is, the fact that we've got two southpaws. Well, two southpaws is two like two right-handers. <laughs> There's nothing different. <laughs> Vasquez fighting much harder, much better now taking the round, but he's certainly not sweeping over Dadiev, and he's certainly got a little bit of uh, regard here for his punching power. He just can't come in wide open like he had before. Now he knows he could get dropped. So we are heading for the bell in round number four. Another pretty good round for Ahmet Dadiev of Russia. And there's the bell to end round four. Well, we had results of our open scoring public opinion poll. 92% uh, for should boxing go to open scoring in your opinion and eliminate the element of surprise and perhaps take away the perception of improprieties. I think so. I think it should be done. We did it for a year on NBC and it didn't change anything to anybody except one fight. 
uh, uh, where Johnny Bumpus got cut. He was able to know that he was ahead so he could stop and win the fight. Now, had that happened with Chavez, that was a perfect example. He would have known he was ahead. He could have said, I don't want to fight anymore and win the fight. Now, if that's the case, then that would have been a scandal all over the place. So you've got to understand, if you've got open scoring, you have that defect. A fighter knows just where he's at, and if he gets fouled, he can determine whether he wants to continue or not based on whether he's ahead or not. You've got to understand, that's part of that system. If you can accept that, and I can accept this, then it's all for it. I don't re see any reason why anybody shouldn't know whether they're ahead or not in an athletic contest. None. Do you think the day will come when we will actually see it happen? Yes, I do. I, I, I do believe it has to happen because we can't keep having these strange nights in boxing. All right, Bertie, round number five. Julio Cesar Vasquez, in his mind, certainly did not think it was going to go this far, and he certainly didn't think he was going to be knocked down. It happened in round number three. Does he have a southpaw, but to illustrate his power from both sides, Bertie, he put Vasquez on the canvas with the right hand. Yeah. And he and he set it up beautifully too. I mean, it was it wasn't any just flash thing. He set it up pretty, and he and he dropped it right in where he wanted to. And his defense is very good. You know, uh, you're talking about a, a master at at, at uh, offense. Vasquez, he's not getting through that guard too good. He's he's doing all right, but he's not getting it through. He's not dominating. He's in no way in, in, in inflicting any big pain on. Uh, uh, Dadiev and Dadiev for his part he just waits and when he has his chance he comes in with two or three punches not bad not bad pretty good left hand there by uh, Dadiev we talked about how busy Vasquez is seven title defenses in 17 months Dadiev last fought 23 days ago oh what a right hand by Dadiev but back comes Vasquez that was a flashing combination and it ended up with a strong right hand and again the sweat flew up in the air as he landed right on the jaw Vasquez saying, what did I get myself into here? He has got himself a challenge. And what he's doing, or lacking uh, the offense of, of Vasquez, he's just putting that one punch in and nothing else. He's not following two and three punches. And you know, your observation, and he was sucking wind, is still holding on now. Look at his face. He keeps blowing wind like, oh, wow, I got to go. If he has to go 12 here, we may see big trouble. What is it? Is there something in the air in Showtime? We keep getting these upsets. What are we doing? The network of upsets. Yes, does Julio Cesar Chavez ring a bell? Well, Dahiev may not be the unknown soldier after tonight in world terms. Less than a minute to go in round five. Well, I already give him a, a great deal of respect. He's in with a with a top champion. He's doing well. It's a pretty even fight right now. It's by no means uh, uh, the execution we thought it was. He's fighting and he's holding his own. And he comes pouring in on Vasquez. Vasquez of Argentina in the white. Dotiev of Russia in the red. Body shots by Vasquez and that one caused some stumbling by Dotiev. Dotiev trying to regain his balance now. He stumbled a little bit. It was a powerful punch to the side, but you know, this guy's moving around so much. He's bound to stumble every once in a while. He's light on his feet, this Dadiev, and his hands are up. A little trouble with the tape. He should have called time. A very game. Ahmed Dadiev lost his balance but recovered quickly. Combination by Vazquez at the bell. Dantiev looks the fresher of the two. I have this fight exactly even on my unofficial scorecard, exactly even, and that's a surprise. Who would have told you that by round five, Dantiev not only is here, but even. Let's watch the combinations that he throws. There's a right hand. He throws a right hand again, and then, you know, he's swarming with it, but watch the last one. Whack! Right on the, on the bottom. That right it hit him right on the bottom of the chin where he wanted to hit it, and sweat flew. I mean... That was a beautiful cover. Now, that was a stumble, which you can see, it, that was really not much more than he stumbled over his feet. It, it wasn't any big punch that caused that. They're going back to the time-honored way of cooling off a fighter, which is to flap a towel on his face. Don't you feel like you're in a time warp here? Yes. Yes, indeed. It's a real throwback. Second time. Vladimir Lavrov in the Nine corner six. of Ahmed Dakiev. A well-schooled fighter. Yeah, and it's not... Oh. oh, but right there he goes down to his knees. Oh, that was to the side. And 
and it, it may and that may have been that stumble last time because he sure hit something it was all body punches it was all body punches there was nothing to the head there seconds in around six Vasquez on the attack he wants to end it now and he should have gone to the body he, he sees that the body is caving him in what's he doing to the head a surge of energy and power This is going to be something. That was a surprise punch. Vasquez very amateurishly going to the head when he should have gone to the body. That's what knocked down Dodiev. So what is he doing up to the head? We've got a war going now. What a surprise. Vasquez down five seconds into round six. Dodiev and Vasquez 35 seconds in. Two knockdowns within 35 seconds of the sixth round. And he is puffing hard, is Vasquez. You can see his cheeks puff out and his lips do a little rhythm there. <laughs> Look at him. He is, that's it. He is really, really puffing. He tried too hard and he blew everything out in the first round, in the first part of the round, and he's, he's cruising now. Vasquez looking like a blowfish in the water. But, but the question, he, he, he dropped him with, with body shots. Why isn't he going to the body? He's such a pro. Why isn't he going to the body? Vasquez disoriented by the challenger Ahmed Dahia. He is certainly not fighting like he should be fighting a man with this much experience. I, again, he came in a little bit with that body shot. His knee just went a little woozy with that body shot. Something must be wrong. Let's see the guy's got a broken rib or something is really hurting him on the side there. And again, Vasquez looking very tired. Expending much energy. Two knockdowns here in this round. Vasquez has been put to the deck twice in the fight. Dot he have once. Well, this will be an interesting round to score because both men went down. And that looked like that punch went down. Yeah. And, and that, it's a, this is the first time we've seen fights in many, many a fight that there haven't been a lot of low blows. and, and or, or either that or this referee doesn't believe in warning people because there have been some low blows. He just acts like he didn't see them. We've seen a few. John Coyle. Not acknowledging it, he's an English referee. Less than 30 seconds left in the sixth round. And almost anything Dadiev would do now could win the round for him because it's an even round. Dadiev barreling into the stomach of Vasquez. Combination by Vasquez got the attention of Dadiev. That was a good, solid combination. This kid has got some kind of jaw on him because he took a good shot then. There's another good shot. The bell. And a tremendous show of respect on behalf of Vasquez as he touched gloves with Dutyev as the bell sounded. Well, it's an I'll have to say I hate even rounds. I have to say that's an even round. Mm -hmm. Both men landed and uh, both men knocked each other out. I can't wait for this replay because we got to look at the first one. Now keep your eyes on the punches. Two, three. That last one didn't hit his head. I don't know what it was. Two punches to the to the uh, body, and said, "Let's take a look." One. No, this is not that 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 replay. This is the replay where Vasquez goes down. There it is. Again, a perfect shot on that big, massive jaw. And Danny, it wasn't a resounding knockdown. I, I don't think the, the his pants even touched the canvas, but his gloves did. That's all they needed. Corners, 10 seconds. And uh, not much of a, a solution from the replays. We saw the body shots. I do not know what put him down that Second hard. Seven. He seems to be such a tough Nine kid. Seven. But I know what put Vasquez down. What a shot right on that big square jaw of his. Round number seven scheduled for 12 for the WBA Junior Middleweight Championship. Now John Coyle tells Dottie to get the punches up. Oh, oh a left nice. hand by... Dahlia, that stung Vasquez. Boy, it was right on the money, so clearly open. If you'd have had some steam with that, mm -mm. I can't believe what I'm seeing here. It is I, I, I am stunned by what I'm seeing here. Vasquez doesn't know what to do with him. Right. A right to the ribs put down Dahlia. A left to the jaw dropped Vasquez in the last round. Two knockdowns in the opening 35 seconds of round six. We are now into round seven. It has been... Uh, Action pack. Now the jab by Vasquez. 
But that, it does not set up the left hand. He just can't get to him. He sets him up with a jam, and then the guy's gone. Sets him up, and then the guy's gone. He's got to learn how to start cutting off this guy, get the distance between them. See this long, huge distance that's all uh, to the advantage of Dadiev, who comes in when he wants to, fights, and then goes back out. Excellent, excellent style of fighting by Dadiev. Nice flurry to the stomach by Dadiev a moment ago. A little look of amazement on the face of uh, uh, <laughs> Vasquez. He's looking like saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, is this supposed to be happening? I mean, here he is way out of uh, out of reach, and he's still reaching for him with a jab. It's a miracle that Dadiev hadn't crossed over that jab. Dadiev with a left hand. Vasquez coming right back, though. Minute 30 left in the seventh round. Vasquez wants to mix it up. That, that's that's all to his advantage but you know what every time he gets in close it's Dadiev that outspeeds him out punches him and then he's gone like the gray ghost I mean he is fighting well as Dadiev another outstanding round for the challenger in the red Dadiev now Dadiev pulling his way in and referee John Coyle has to snap him apart and another warning for a low blow from Dadiev who, who did come in with a low jab wasn't bad, but he did come in. Dadiev showing some good boxing skills here as well, working the jab to the face of Vasquez. And, and Dadiev's appearance is like he was in the first round. I mean, he, he has no uh, expression on his face. He doesn't look tired. He doesn't look weary. And whereas Marquez looks, Mar uh, Vasquez looks ex exceedingly perplexed. I mean, he just looks like, what do I have to do here? And somebody tell me what I have to do to this guy. Less than 30 seconds in the seventh round. Not many people, mostly Vasquez and his people, didn't think it was going to go this far. Vasquez's people told me if it goes past five, it'll be a miracle. Well, a miracle has just arrived in Gulf Pass. A city that could use a miracle. That left me missed by Vasquez and... The Again. bell to end round seven. Again, a little stumble by Dotiev as he goes to the corner. Let's go back to our New York studios and Bruce Beck. All right, Steve. So I don't think Vasquez, Bobby Chess, could ever have expected to be down twice in this fight. No, he certainly couldn't. I think he maybe very much have just overlooked this guy, not trained. He looks to be huffing and puffing a little too hard. And like we said, though, if, if Dadiev had some of the goods offensively and defensively, and defensively he's hiding behind the gloves very well, and he's throwing some great counters. we got a little bit of a war going on. And I have Vasquez just a pinch out in front now. What do you think Vasquez has to do now? I think he's got to, he's certainly bigger and a little stronger. You can see he's pushing Dadiev around a little bit. I think he's got to use that. He's got to force himself on Dadiev, use that strong right jab, but he's got to fire that left, and he's got to work underneath, but he's got to throw more combinations. It's one, two big punches is not working. The little guy's getting around it. All right, ready to go back to Belfast, Ireland, to Steve and Ferdy. Thank you very much, Bruce and Second Bobby. Time. We are getting ready right for in. round number eight. What an exhibition by the challenger in the red, Ahmed Dotiev of Russia, who has put Vasquez down two times in this fight. And they are excited in Vasquez's corner because they have been yelling at him, and uh, for very good reason. He's ahead by maybe one point unofficially on my scorecard. Uh, sitting here at ringside, I, I cannot tell you that it's a sure uh, a score because anybody looking at this could pick uh, uh, Dadiev just as well. Julio Garcia working the corner of Vasquez, doing the talking. Left hand that pushed Dadiev back, but not much effect on him. Well, right there was, was one of those moments where your corner wants you to keep punching, and he grabbed him. Uh, uh, Vasquez had him in the corner, punched three or four good punches, and then let him go. I mean, why let him go? Keep on punching. Body shots by Vasquez, missed with the uppercut. The two southpaws keep going. Good left hand by Vasquez that starts Dadiev for a moment. Dadiev has got to start on feeling that these punches aren't as hard as they were a few uh, rounds ago because, and he's grabbing a lot because it looks like he's exhausted. Uh, Vasquez keeps giving the appearance of being very tired and now his punches look like they don't have that much on them. What an interesting night in Belfast this is yes. going to be. And we've if, only just begun. If, uh, if Dadiev has, uh, if, if Dadiev has a gas tank, those extra gas tanks that people have, whoa, is it going to be an interesting end of this fight? 
It's not only the offense being provided here by Dottiev, but the defense very impressive as well. If he just got more offense going with it, uh, you know, he would he could take these rounds, but he's not. He's, he's letting the other guy carry the aggressiveness, do all the punching, and of course you can't win a round like that. I mean, defense is wonderful, but you got to come something back with it. I mean, you just don't let it, uh, the punches miss, and then never get, never lash out with your own. And oftentimes, you have to win decisively when you are the challenger. And the defender. <laughs> and a guy that fights a defensive fight, not, not an offensive fighter. I, I, I can't explain uh, his inactivity right now through this whole round. Dadiev has done nothing. I can't explain that because the fight is his to take. Well, he might be taking a breather here, trying to trying to get his win back. Less than 30 seconds remaining in round number eight. But this has been a high-powered, high-energy fight to this point. Dottiev really breathing deeply now. Yeah, the first time I saw him take a deep breath and look at his corner. Almost like saying, hey, I'm getting through the round, I'm resting, don't worry. And, of course, he is just, just getting through this round with, with no effort. He's not, he's not done anything except avoid punches. And that is it for round eight. And by the same token, the champion, Vasquez, unable to take advantage of that situation. And look over in the Vasquez corner. He is really de-energized. His, his um, breaths are extremely deep. I mean, he's taking huge breaths. They haven't put any ice on him. They've got his arms down. That's good. He's moving his legs like to get him get some action going. They aren't working on him violently. They're not trying to get him back. Now he's getting a rub from his trainer, getting the blood circulation going in either arm. And that's very good corner work. Get that circulation going, get the blood flowing. And a very demonstrative trainer, Vladimir Lavrov, in the corner of Dottiev. Trying to get his point across. So we're here at the seconds. King's Hall in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Steve Albert, the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, ringside. This is the first Second of two fights. world championship fights you're seeing right tonight right. on Showtime Championship Boxing. And what a surprise this has been. The champion, Julio Cesar Vasquez of Argentina in the white, has been put down twice by this unheralded upstart challenger, Ahmed Dottiev of Russia. Well, let's keep our eye on Dottiev. Corner must have said to him, all right. You rested. You gave away that round. Now let's get this one. And of course, there's the, the, exactly how he started. And that is what Vasquez should want. I mean, he should want this guy to come to him and attack. He should invite him in. Right. Vasquez had a series of disappointments in arranging title fights. He was scheduled to fight Vinny Pazienza, but the WBA champ got into that car accident. A year later, he was scheduled to fight Aaron Davis for the vacant title. But when promoters chose Buenos Aires, right. the American perhaps correctly backed out. He later did meet Aaron Davis in Monte Carlo last August, scored a decision to retain his title. He should have gone to Buenos Aires. Yeah. Nice and city. Nice and pretty. Nice, nice low blow, but only to the hip by Vasquez. Vasquez is throwing everything. Look at this. He's coming after him. It's not that he's not trying, but there's the elusive Dadiev. Well, on the other hand, Dadiev is not making any points with just defense. Got to come on. Not doing it. What an unlikely story this is turning out to be. Dadiev, only 13 pro fights, 11 1 and 1 against Vasquez, 49 and 1 with 34 KOs. Vasquez came into this fight having never been knocked down. Tonight, he goes to the canvas not once, but twice. Right. This is the kind of fight where you had a, a clock visible, as they used to be in Madison Square Garden. This is a, the place where both fighters would be looking at the clock. Because both of them, every once in a while, look, look at the corner like saying, how much time is left? Give me some hint. In the old days, we used to be able to holler out 30. And, and so, oh, what a low blow by Dadiev and nothing. What a low blow. And meanwhile, paying the price is Vasquez. Yeah. He's tired enough with that left. That really takes the win out. He's less than a minute to go in round nine. Well, you, you can see the growing anguish in the face of Vasquez, but also the growing uh, determination. It's almost like it's starting to grow now, like the monster is starting to beat there, saying, oh, now I got to come on and get this guy. Pretty good left uppercut now by Vasquez, getting a little more energy. All of a sudden, getting that second win. I have I have no explanation why, for why he has not pummeled the body, having netted him the result of a, of a uh, 
uh, knockdown. I cannot see any reason why he doesn't return to hit something that's there instead of trying to get that elusive head behind the gloves. Uh, he's now starting to really tee off on Dadiev. Dadiev's not doing it. He's getting weaker. Dadiev is fatigued. He's exhausted. But Vasquez cannot put him down as we head for the bell. No, but, but it's not long now. He is walking, as you would say, in sections to his yeah. corner. He, he did one of those Terry Norris as he walked his, his corner in sections. Of course, they got to jump on him and work on him because the guy's fought a good fight, but he, all of a sudden, it's like he's, those body shots are starting to take him apart. I would be surprised if something is not wrong because every time he hits that side, the guy looks like he weakens even more. And this time, he paid attention. See, in, in this, there, that punch. And in, in these replays, you see that he never forgives that 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 opportunity to go in there and get a little shot to the body and every time he does that he weakens Dadiev more now watch his last shot he's went to the corner he, he, he is on the way he needs one well connected shot and that's the end of, of that but he, he couldn't get it there he could not get it in the true spirit of vintage Julio Cesar Chavez Julio Corners Cesar Vasquez is accumulating punches now and it is having its effect on Ahmed Datiev. Interestingly, Datiev's Second side. hero is Chavez. Right Vasquez's heroes are Sugar Ray Leonard and Roberto Duran. Not yeah. Carlos Monzon, not <laughs> Victor Galindez, also from Argentina. Or, or not Muhammad Ali. Oh, oh, look at this. Here he comes, and down goes Datiev, almost in sheer exhaustion. Yeah. On top of a punch. Yeah, this, this is, that was less one punch, is accumulation of punch and fatigue. I, I, whatever is hurting him is hurting him. And, and uh, that combination should have been right. See that, see that punch to the body? And Vasquez, sensing the finish, puts him down again. That, that body is killing him. Something is wrong with the body. Oh, Joel, that's eight. All right, he lets him go. So he's down 10 seconds into round 10 and 28 seconds in. And Vasquez, right above us, tumbling away. And that's it. Three knockdown rule is in effect here in the WBA. And this fight is over. Again, the body shot. Again, that last body shot puts him down. And I'd be interested to see. I hope we get to talk to him before the evening is over and find out what it was in his body that was hurting him that bad that he went down every time he got hit. Because he was doing all right until that body shot started to wear him out. So the man known as the other, Julio Cesar, needed a little time before he finally got to a very courageous and game Ahmed Dantier. And here are the combination of punches that we're looking at that, that didn't want. Keep, keep your eye on the punches and watch the punch that finally comes. Well, that was a, a shove down. Uh, then you see a um, the, the punches that put him to the, that last punch that, that he hits him with that drives him into the canvas. Keep watching with, it, with the hand that goes to the side. There it goes. It, that last punch was needless. He was on the way. He was gone on the way two to the head and there's a punch to the side now as soon as he does that as soon as he does that as soon as that left hook to the rib comes in down he goes so there must be something it's either broken or severely bruised and he couldn't stand the pain but I want to say one thing before we get any further than this my hats off to this man because he fought he gentlemen we have the time 47 seconds in round number 10 the three knockdown rule in effect Referee in charge, John Coyle, stops the contest. The winner by way of knockout and still champion, Julio Cesar Vasquez. Julio Cesar Vasquez. Now 50 and 1 with 35 knockouts. And he retains his WBA junior middleweight title, his eighth title defense. Things looking a little worrisome there early. You can still see the seriousness of the situation as Ahmed Dahiev Ferdi is saluted with a major ovation here in Belfast. He's won a lot of fans here in Northern Ireland. A roaring, roaring crowd to respect this little-known challenger who came in and dropped the champion twice. Amazing. There's the belt. A knockdown fest. Dahiev went down four times. Vasquez down two times. Six knockdowns all told in this fight. So here at King's Hall in Belfast, 
Northern Ireland. We'll return with post fight interviews in a short while as Julio Cesar Vasquez knocks out Ahmed Dahiev for his 50th win. Let's go back to our New York studios and Bruce Beck. Okay, Steve, still to come, our main event of the evening, the WBO Super Middleweight Championship as Chris Eubank makes his 10th title defense, and for the second time, his opponent is the dangerous Ray Close, who battled the champ to a draw a little over one year ago. But Bobby Chez, thoughts of this last fight? It was a pretty good one. Well, we saw that what we talked about earlier, too. Does uh, Vasquez have that chin to go with all the other tools he has offensively? Didn't appear today as if he has that chin. A bigger, better puncher than that, I think, hurts him bad, maybe stops him. Dadiev obviously not in good physical condition because when it got to the eighth round, he simply ran out of gas. He held his gloves up so high, so much around his face, guarding his jaw so carefully, you might have thought he had a bad chin, and what he, in fact, had was a bad body. As soon as he got hit to the body, with a good clean shot, he went down. And, you know, the body, and, uh, the body attack ensued, caused him to be completely debilitated and having to quit. What about Vasquez's medal, being down twice in the fight and still being able to regroup and come out with a victory? Well, once again, I still think against a better fighter, the better fighter keeps Vasquez on the defensive, pushes him back, works on that chin. This guy, a little too small, not strong enough. Vasquez, much stronger, bigger fighter, appeared to be bigger on camera. Pounds, not a lot, but just an enormous strength difference. I think that's what made the difference. You know, this 154-pound weight class over the years in the WBA has produced champions such as Sugar Ray Leonard and Roberto Duran and Mike McCallum. Does this guy rank with any of them? Not with those three. Those three were fine, fine fighters. He's, he's got some things to prove to get in that company. Well, what about Vasquez coming on late, though, when he finally saw the blood, he sensed it, and he went after it? He's got a championship part. He's going to do what he has to do. He's got a title he wants to keep. He's got a lot of pride. I'm certainly uh, sure he wasn't going to leave there without giving it his all, and his all was good enough. All right, let's go back to Steve Albert and Ferdy Pacheco in Belfast for some final thoughts on the bout. Thank you, Bruce. Welcome back to the King's Hall here in Belfast, Northern Ireland, where just moments ago, Julio Cesar Vasquez knocked out Ahmed Dahiev of Russia. 47 seconds into round 10. Three knockdown rule was in effect. He went down for the third time in that 10th uh, round. And for a while there, things looked a little tricky for the champion, but then the accumulation of punches really uh, fatigued the challenger. I, I think it was that and then the fact that there, he had something wrong with his wrist. We didn't get a chance uh, to see him because of the, the time element, but any time a guy gets hit on the side and he goes right down, you know there's something wrong. Something is hurting him, a bruised rib, a disconnected rib. I mean, something's hurting him. Uh, he, I believe, put on the performance of the year for an underdog who was totally unknown. For a guy to come in here and knock down a guy that's never been down, like Vasquez, that's a major plus. And, and the crowd gave it to him, a big plus. I think we'll see him again. I think we'll see him again on, on uh, Showtime, and, I, and I, uh, he should be on. I mean, a guy that comes on like that and puts on a performance from out of nowhere and knocks down the champion twice deserves to be seen. You know, oftentimes a fighter can lose, and yet his stock goes up, and I think that is the case. And I mean, oh, yeah, I mean, a lot of people have lost, and their stock comes up, and none come to mind right now, but that one is definitely one of them. I mean, that guy lost, and he should be back. Now, where does Julio Cesar Vasquez go from here? Does he need to do a little soul-searching before he moves on? No, I, I, in his case, he just fought April. This guy's got to be exhausted. I mean, they're, they're, what they're doing to him is like running a racehorse in every, in every race. Enough already. Give him two or three months off. I think he needs to go home. I need he, he needs two or three months off, come back in September to fight, and then get properly trained. His training was he fights. He fought in April. He fought this guy now without training. Look at the way he was blowing and puffing. This could have been a disaster for him. Luckily, the, the difference in, uh, in caliber showed at the end. You can't beat a guy of that caliber with no, with no experience. So I, I, I think what we saw is really, truly a minor miracle of this sport. You can come in. You can persevere. If you've just got your guts in the right place, you can challenge a champion. But you can't persist over 12 rounds. It'll catch you in the end. All right, so Julio Cesar Vasquez with a 10th round knockout over Ahmed Dahiev. Let's go back to our New York studios and Bruce Beck. fight is in the books and now we turn our attention to the main event of the evening. It's scheduled for 12 rounds for the WBO super middleweight title and it's the rematch of a stunning draw which was waged exactly one year and six days ago. It's Chris Eubank and Ray Close ready to battle in Belfast. British born Chris Eubank calls himself simply the best. He has defended his world title efficiently and effectively 
and he has defended it often. He's undefeated since turning pro in 1985, and he's knocked out 18 opponents. That's why it was such a surprise when Ray Close battled him to the final bell in their first fight in Scotland. To put it in simple terms, the fight was closer than anyone expected. Some still think it was the luck of the Irish. For no one out of Ray Close's native Belfast believed he had a chance against England's Chris Eubank in their title fight one year ago. After all, the eccentric Eubank, famous for his strange behavior and bizarre posings, had won all 35 of his fights, successfully defending his WBO middleweight and super middleweight titles 10 times in three years. While close, the 24-year-old Irish and European champion was facing his first world-class opponent in his first world title fight. I didn't know he was one of the super best super middleweights in the world, but uh, uh, just like any other fight, you know, guy to beat. Yet right from the opening bell in Scotland, close surprised the critics. As the fight progressed, the momentum shifted back and forth. Eubank scoring with his boxing skills, close retaliating with his aggressive style. After 10 rounds, most ringside observers believed the fight was almost even when Eubank surprised his young challenger. It was just a lapse of concentration. You know, when I went down, uh, I just got my thoughts together, got up, and uh, there was no danger in me going back down again. And uh, I think this time, that'll figure, because it'll be in his mind that he's had his chance and he couldn't finish me. I think that'll be in his mind this time. Even with the knockdown, it was a very close fight, one that could go either way. Ultimately, the fight was declared a draw. Now, one year and six days later, England's Chris Eubank and Ireland's Ray Close will fight again for the WBO Super Middleweight Championship. But this time, they do it in Close's hometown of Belfast, Ireland. It's great to be in Belfast. Uh, the fans will be behind me, and uh, I believe that uh, that will take me to victory. While Chris Eubank has made a habit out of going the distance, having gone 12 rounds on 11 different occasions, Close has completed a 12-round fight only once, but he picked the right time to do so, his only world championship fight. Tonight, Ray Close hopes the fans from his homeland will enable him not only to finish the fight, but win it as well. Bobby Chez, should Close utilize the same game plan he used in the first fight? Well, in the first fight, he was real effective. Eubank seemed to be in somewhat of a low for the first nine rounds. Didn't really work. Came on late to score a knockdown just to pull out a draw. But I'll tell you what, early on in the fight, Ray Close pushing, pushing, pushing. He's only been 12 rounds one time, and he was forcing the fight as if he had gone 12 rounds so often, much like Eubank, who goes 12 rounds all the time. Eubank didn't look like he wanted a quick pace early, wanted to wait till late and just pick his shots. What is Eubank's plan of attack? Well, Eubank's plan of attack should be to hit this guy to the body because he's a better puncher, one punch knockout-wise. He's a much bigger puncher. He should work the younger Irish challenger to the body a little bit, slow him down, set the pace the way he wants by weakening the fighter, pick his shots, throw the big bombs late, and always rip that right uppercut on the inside, which was so effective the first time, the only punch scoring the knockdown. He is one of only 39 British champions over the years, but a lot of people in Britain think he's one of the most exciting. You agree? Well, he's certainly exciting because he's so controversial. He's a little weird with his posing he gets in. He's, you know, a little flamboyant. He has some antics that he puts on. So colorful and, and exciting, I'd say yes. He has the ability to box and punch, but Nigel Ben, the last time, would have a lot to say about that. I thought Nigel Ben beat him the second fight. Clearly, the first fight was Chris Eubank. Second fight, for me, clearly, Nigel Ben. Philosophy for both fighters in a rematch such, such, such as this. I mean, how do you approach it? Usually, the better fighter that's getting a second look at his opponent the man who has the tools will do better the second time. But sometimes with a young upstart with a fire in his belly like the young challenger is in his hometown now, who have all that much more incentive that he took the world champion in his first shot at a title in a 12-round fight, took him the distance to a controversial draw and being knocked down late, might have an added fire, could be slight advantage to the challenger, especially in the uh, bullet-ridden Belfast. Well, the hometown favorite is obviously close, but we have seen before so many times in boxing Holyfield, for example, fighting in Atlanta, sometimes it doesn't work beneficially for the guy who's from his hometown. Well, sometimes the judges aren't from the hometown. You never know what's <laughs> on their mind. You're back to the judges again. Well, you can't help it. Sometimes you have to wonder what the judges are thinking about during some fights. 
All right, finally, your prediction, Chappie. I know you're a broadcaster. You're also a boxer, but are you a prognosticator? Only a pugilistic prognosticator, my friend. In this fight, I have to go with the champion, Chris Eubank. He's a better boxer, certainly. I think he's a better puncher as well. If he has all his P's and Q's in order today, late round knockout or unanimous decision, not nearly as close as the first time. That's the way I see it. I like your alliteration. Well done. Here now a look at the tail of the tape for this WBO Super Middleweight title fight. Chris Eubank is two years older than Ray Close. Both fighters are 5'10". Close is a quarter pound heavier at 168 and has a slight reach advantage. Rules of the World Boxing Organization are in effect tonight. Scoring done on a 10-point must system. Three judges score the fight. The referee does not. There is no standing eight count. The three knockdown rule is in effect. Only the referee has the authority to stop the fight. And the fighter cannot be saved by the bell except in the last round. So the scene is set for the WBO Super Middleweight Championship. The 10th title defense for Chris Eubank. Right now, let's go back to Belfast and to the King's Hall to Steve Albert and Ferdy Pacheco. Thanks again, Bruce, and we welcome you back to the King's Hall in Belfast, where earlier this evening in our first championship bout, Julio Cesar Vazquez retained his WBA junior middleweight title over Ahmed Dotiev of Russia. Three knockdown rule in round 10. Dotiev outstanding early on, but ended in sheer exhaustion. Right now, we're closing in on our main event, the WBO Super Middleweight Championship between the title holder, Chris Eubank of England, and Ray Close from right here in Northern Ireland in a rematch of a draw almost exactly a year ago to the day. Hello again, everybody. Steve Albert with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. And Ferdy, does Chris Eubank need to win decisively over Ray Close tonight to still be considered among the top super middleweights in the world? I think he reads, needs to win decisively to win the decision here because if he doesn't win big he's not going to win it here you have no idea the intensity of these people once they get going and what it's going to do to close so he must win and he must win big to win the decision if he does that then he's back up to where he can challenge other people he has been disappointing he's been disappointing for the last four or five fights and nothing he has done has brought him back to that prominence that he had before. He is a good champion. He can punch well. He has a strong punch, a good defense. But he just quit fighting. It's as if, as if he said in the press conference the other day, I don't want to hurt people anymore. I don't want to hit him in the head. I want to hit him in the body. I, mean, I don't know what he's talking about. I, what, I'm, what I see is that uh, the fight with Michael Watson took a lot out of him. He, he fought a very hard fight. Michael Watson got hurt in that fight. He had to go to the hospital. He's recovering now, thank God. We saw him get a standing ovation, Michael Watson, when he came the last time we fought here. But he's still got that in his mind. He still, even in the press conference, talks about not depleting the nerve cells of somebody by hitting him now. Well, he's going to have to get over that with this kid because this kid, close, according to the last fight, comes to fight as soon as the bell rings, and he doesn't stop till the last bell rings. And he has got a fire in him, and it's going to be fueled by this enormous crowd, which is, the intensity is is beyond what you can think of. It's like an Ali night, or a Barry McGuigan night, or as Eusebio Pedroza in, in Panama. They just come out and yell from the opening bell. So if he poses, if he does all of those theatrical things that he does, and it's unbelievable, as we will see, the things he gets away with, posing. It looks like he's posing for a statue or something. But he, if he gets away with that foolishness, this crowd is going to just shower him with booze. Well, he says that uh, he poses to provoke mistakes, but the close people say he poses because he lacks stamina. It bides him time. Well, Why do you think he does it? it I tell you, it, it's a time-honored trick. Muhammad Ali was a master of that. He would clown around. Everybody said, what's he clowning for? He was wrestling. So did Sugar Ray Leonard. So did Sugar Ray Robinson. So did a lot of beautiful fighters who knew that if they were playing around they could rest they didn't have to fight during that time he does that I think to rest he also does it to antagonize the crowd there's something in this guy that that he has to make people mad well he makes the audience mad the audience hates it and they boo him and they throw things and so forth so we're going to see an interesting fight if he starts to do that here do you think there'll be less strutting and posing tonight he'll take a more serious business-like vein well he's bet a lot of money He's bet $2,000 that he can knock him out in the first round at 50 to 1 odds with, with Eastman and $4,000 that he can knock him out in the seven at 44 to 1. So Bobby Judge, you should be here. Yeah. So the main event is coming up in just a little while. The battle for the WBO Super Middleweight Championship between Chris Eubank of England, Ray Close of right here in Belfast, Northern Ireland. For more on the fight, let's go back to our New York studios and Bruce Beck. 
Thank you very much, Steve. Well, Eubank has not stopped an opponent in two years, Bobby. So what does that tell you? Well, I don't know. Freddie was just talking about the long odds and betting going on that he may stop somebody. I think Chris Eubank has picked his spots to rest by doing some of the antics as Freddie talked about. And there's times when he just doesn't seem to want to fight. I'm not totally sure why. Only Chris Eubank knows. He has the power, but he doesn't seem to have the energy to sustain the attack for a long time and yet w not be able to worry over the long haul. He seems to worry about the long distances, yet he goes them all the time. In two of his last three fights, he has battled to a draw, once with Ben, once with Close. Does a fighter lose his edge a little bit in that type of situation? I'll tell you, battling to a draw is always a controversy one way or the other, depending on the fans and everything and the surroundings, etc. It's always going to probably take away a little bit of the confidence of a champion, especially a champion knowing that a challenger, more than one now, has taken you to a draw and you may have lose, lost your invincibility, the aura of invincibility, that, that feeling you get of not being able to be beaten. From invincibility to inactivity, Close hasn't fought in 215 days, Eubank 104 days. Could that be a part of our fight in terms of a story? It, it could be, but I don't think so. I think these fighters are very uh, uh, capable of getting to training camp together and doing what they have to there. There's an awful lot of work that goes on in that training camp. They get right and ready there. They hire a number of sparring partners, many different guys that all will do their best to simulate their opponent. They'll get right there. I don't think the inactivity is going to be a factor. Age, though, may be a factor when it comes to Eubank being older and starting to show little signs of wear and tear. Two draws in a row could be third. WBO Super Middleweight Championship on the line. Twelve rounds. We're set to go back to Belfast, Ireland to Stephen Ferdy. Gentlemen, take it away. Thanks very much, uh, Bruce and Bobby. Back here at the King's Hall in Belfast, Northern Ireland. We're getting ready for the WBO Super Middleweight Championship featuring Chris Eubank of England and Ray Close right here in his backyard from Belfast, Northern Ireland. Eubank in the press conference yesterday, Ferdy, said that it's not going to go past four rounds, but he hasn't had a knockout his last seven fights since April of 1992. What kind of a fight are you looking for? Do you think it will be a close a fight as in the first one? I think it will. I think it will be the, uh, the possessed uh, close in his hometown chasing and working on him if he gets clipped. And, and boy, Chris Eubanks can do this. If he can clip him with one punch, a nice little uppercut like he did. It could be a short circuit fight. I don't see that. I see a long fight. I see a lot of work on the part of Close and a lot of posing and not so much work on the part of uh, Eubank because that's his style. And uh, then going to decision. If it goes to decision, he, uh, Eubank would have to beat him decisively to win. If, it go, if he drops him two or three times during the round or once during the, the fight, then there's a possibility that he could get the decision. But... Uh, I, th I think it's a very interesting fight. It, it depends on what Chris Eubank shows up. If it's the one from the last four or five fights, I think Close can take him. If it's the original one we saw where he comes out banging, then Eubank can beat him. All right, we are set to go to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr., to introduce the challenger, Ray Close. So get ready for some fireworks here in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Through that massive crowd 
And Bertie Close said yesterday, I have a fire burning inside me. Eubank does not. How much of that is just the free fight hype? How much is reality? Because when you hear Eubank talk, you think he's ready to retire. Is Close hungrier, or are those just words? They're words because while he talks and gives a lot of gibberish about retiring, he is ready to sign an eight-fight contract with Sky TV as Chris Eubank. So enough of that retirement nonsense. He's not going anywhere. He has to win here in order to collect big bucks but, for an eight-fight contract. But how about the fact that Close says he's got more fire than Eubank? Oh, he definitely has. He's, he's got a, a he's in his hometown. He had more fire in the last fight, and now he's got an excellent corner. He's got politically, he's so well collected here, I'd be uh, shocked if he lost here. And uh, he's a young guy who hasn't been there. He hasn't been the champion, and he can taste it. Here he comes, dressed all in green. Ray Close, his second try at a world title, hearing it from this crowd. He is thinking upset, along with about 8,000 fans. Back to Jimmy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, making his way to the ring, please welcome the WBO Super Middleweight Champion, Chris Eubank. champion undefeated Chris Eubank the 27 year old Eubank will be making his 10th defense of the title as Ray Close paces and waits and this could be another ploy by the champion to make Close wait as long as possible nothing surprises me but Chris Eubank a man who calculates every move and uh, apparently to antagonize the press and his opponents he comes dressed spiffily and uh, he is giving one epigram after another. You feel like you want to give him a bound book of Oscar Wilde's epigrams so he can uh, conduct a press conference. He, he can talk to this young guy. And he's coming out not in a hurry. Let everybody uh, take their time and boo him roundly. And finally, here comes Eubank, 36 0 2, 18 knockouts, born in Dulwich, England, now lives in Brighton, England, hearing the boos from the crowd. The enigmatic, arrogant, colorful Eubank generally likes to enter the ring by jumping over the top rope. We'll see if he does that tonight. Right now, the Irish fans antagonizing him by touching his hair as he goes by, and he is hates it. He's making some kind of fierce face. They're trying to protect him from that. I don't think that should be allowed. Anybody should be allowed to touch a fighter. Come, come close. There's an unwritten rule in boxing. Don't touch a fighter's hair or an announcer's hair. Yeah. <laughs> Look at him. Look, look at the arrogance of this guy. Oh, yeah. He wants everybody to be mad. The man you love to hate. Look at look at, Look at the posing. He's just starting. He's standing as if on a pedestal before he gets into the ring. 